So now that we have found an inverse graphically, it's time to figure out how we can find an inverse algebraically without looking at a graph. So in general, what you're gonna always do first is simply interchange the x and the y values. So interchange x and y. And as I do this, I'm gonna do a little example here off to the side. So let's say we had the function f of x is equal to 2x minus 3. So remember, f of x is just a fancy way of writing y, so I would change that to y equals 2x minus 3, and then I would just interchange x and y. So that would become x equals 2y minus 3. Then you're going to just go ahead and solve for y. So isolate y. So in my example, I would add 3 to both sides. So x plus 3 is equal to 2y. And then divide both sides by 2. So y would be equal to x plus 3 divided by 2. And in the end, you want to make sure that you go ahead and use the inverse notation in your final answer. So use inver inverse notation in final answer. And what I mean by inverse notation, you just don't want to leave your final answer as y. We want to be more descriptive than that. So go ahead and use the inverse of f notation. So my final answer in this mini example would be the inverse of f is equal to x plus 3 divided by 2. And I wanted to start with this example so that you can really see what the inverse function is doing to this original function. So imagine for this original function, if I asked you to plug in a value for x, okay? If I said, I want you to substitute in some number for x, you would substitute that number in, and the first thing that you would do is multiply that number by 2. So I'm just going to keep track of my operations here, times by 2. And then you would take that number and you would subtract 3 from it. Now look at the inverse function. If I were to ask you to substitute a value in for x here, the first thing you would do is take that value and you would add 3, and then you would divide that number by 2. So the key to inverses is seeing that every single operation gets undone. Instead of having multiplication by 2 in the original function, you see in the inverse we have division by 2 because multiplication and division are inverse operations. The original function has subtraction by 3, and the inverse function has addition by 3. So you can see every single operation gets undone. And not only do they all get undone, but they get done in the reverse order. See how we multiply by 2 first and then subtract 3 in the original function. So in the inverse, we add 3 first and then we divide by 2. And both of those operations completely undo one another. And that's what's going to happen every time in an inverse function. That inverse function is essentially going to undo every single operation that we had in the original function.